Okay, I personally, uh, Douglas, I prefer modified guestum. Um, the uh, the reason being that that caters for any kind of um, five five hand. So playing modified guestum, um, you know, one diamond, two diamonds is always both majors. One diamond, three clubs is always the two extreme on bid suits. I spades and clubs. One club, three clubs is always spades and diamonds. And one heart, two no trumps is always both minors. Or, or the two lowest unbid suits. Um, I think that, that caters for more. But those are specifically the way I play it for 5-5 five, five hands, which you won't always have. Okay? If you've got a 5 4 hand, I wouldn't use any of them. Um, obviously, you can arrive at a different style with your partner. Uh, but I would, I would always do it with 5 5. And also, it's always weak or strong, never intermediate. So if I've got an intermediate hand, it doesn't, it doesn't come into it anyway. If you use. Michael's Unusual No Trump or Guest M3 Clubs uh, with an intermediate hand you give partner an impossible problem uh, if they are also intermediate because they don't know uh, whether they should invite or pass or force over your bid. If you do it with weak or strong hands i.e. 5 to 9 or 16 plus then partner can always uh, 
treat your bidders weak and bid accordingly and now you can push if you've got the 16 plus hand if you've got an intermediate hand you just overcall and again partner knows what to do if you've overcalled if they have an intermediate hand they know immediately they may not know where your second suit is but they know whether they need to bid something or not okay it's a matter of your style Douglas at the end of the day um, you know I'm not saying that you you absolutely have to do what I'm saying and this doesn't necessarily go towards doubles which is what we're discussing today um, but uh, it's it's a matter of of developing your style so that you've covered all of the the normal bases and okay no no system covers absolutely every possible situation but if you've covered all the common ones you won't go far wrong and if you come up with an unusual circumstance then you just have to muddle through as best you can um, there's not much you can do about that okay right let's have a look at negative doubles Sorry, Eliana, I did see your, your question before and I'd forgotten about it. Um, I, I think if you're playing against precision, pretty much you have to assume that the, the opening bit of one diamond is natural. If you've got diamonds, then pass the opening bit of one diamond and then bid two diamonds on the second round of bidding. Because you didn't, if you bid one diamond, two diamonds, anybody's going to take that as Michael's or Gestem if you play that. Um, if, you, if you pass initially, and when and if the bidding comes back round to you, you bid two diamonds, then that's clearly showing diamonds. It's not showing anything else. Um, if you assume that the, the one diamond opening is natural, even if it isn't, if you if you base your system on the fact that it's it will be natural ish most of the time not all the time but most of the time um, and you and your partner develop your bidding on the basis that it was so um, a take out double of one diamond is the take out same as a take out double of one heart it's just showing support for a different set of suits okay you, you, the trouble is you don't know whether the one diamond has a diamond suit or not because it doesn't have to um, so all you can do is to assume that it is and bid accordingly and then adjust your bidding later on if it looks like uh, it isn't you know if you if you uh, if you've got say I don't know, three card diamond support sorry, three card diamonds but a strong hand and, and perhaps four three 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 shape and you make a take out double against their one diamond opening and partner bids two diamonds then you have to assume probably that that is actually showing diamonds Again, if you and your partner agree that it's actually showing something else, then that's fine, as long as you and your partner are on the same wavelength.
my definition, Sanya, is more flexible. It doesn't. It will normally have four hearts because normally most people agree that negative doubles do show four card support for any unbid major. But the fact is, essentially, a negative double is a takeout double. In that sequence you've shown, one diamond, an overcall of one spade and double, essentially you're showing hearts and clubs here. You're showing support for the unbid suit. You're implying that you don't have good support for diamonds, and you probably don't have <laughs> the ability to bid one no trump. But sometimes you might make a, a, a negative double there, even if you did have a spade stop, just in order to show the fact that you do have hearts and clubs. So, uh, I'm, I, what I'm suggesting to you isn't actually different than what you're saying there, it's just it's a more flexible definition of it. It's, it's showing that, that you have got that four cards four card heart strength and it is essentially a take out double that's, that's if you look up the definition of negative double then essentially if you read that that is what it will tell you if you're using it just to show four card hearts or less than ten points and a five plus card heart suit um, that's a much more restricted um, definition. Suppose the bidding starts one heart, one spade over call, double. What does that show in your definition? It doesn't show anything because there isn't an unbid major. But in my definition, it's still essentially showing support for both minors and the inability to, to bid one no trump. So my definition is much more flexible. Um, it doesn't go against yours, but it encompasses um, a wider variety of hands, potentially. And it's easier to get right, I feel. And there will be times when you, you might actually only have three-card hearts, rather than four-card hearts, but you do have the strength to bid on further if you don't have that. No, I meant in, in the sequence you did. One diamond, one spade, double. Yes, it implies that you don't have a five card minor, otherwise you, you would be more likely to bid it. But you might, you might have four card hearts and five card clubs in your sequence and still make a take a, a negative double over one spade. Again, it all depends on your strength and uh, your support for diamonds, your ability to stop spades. There's all sorts of things that go into that mix. But essentially, if you treat a, take, a negative double as essentially a takeout double, showing strength for the unbid suits, support for the unbid suits, then that's a very simple definition and you won't go far wrong. It's the inability to bid something else and support for the unbid suit. Okay, any other questions or comments before we move on with a closer look at negative doubles? So over that last sequence, one, one diamond, an overcall of two clubs, and then double. Um, you may not be 4-4 four, four in the majors, but the chances are that you probably are. Uh, but you might be 4-3, for example. 
again, you're, you're implying support for the unbid suits. So I wouldn't say you'd, you'd always be 4-4 in the majors at least, um, but the chances are that you would be in that sequence. Again, there's no, there's no hard and fast rules about this. If you and your partner think you're only going to play negative to doubles up to the level of two spades, then that's fine. As long as you and your partner are on the same wavelength, it's okay. Uh, personally, I would rather play negative doubles up to about the level of four diamonds. Um, certainly up to three diamonds. Um, I know a lot of expert pairs, I mean world class pairs who, who play negative doubles up to almost any level. That's fine, Joe. I, again, as long as you and your partner have that agreement, it's fine. Um, you know, I, I mean, personally, I would probably play the same way. Certainly, one club, one diamond, double. There's no point uh, because you've got an easy one-level bid in either major if you've only got one of them. Um, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily play that one club one diamond, one spade uh, is guaranteeing five card spades simply because I could have made a negative double. I might not have even three card hearts and I wouldn't feel comfortable doubling if I only had a doubleton heart there. So as long as you and your partner are on the same wavelength, that's fine. And this is, it's discussing things like this that, that are what makes a partnership. You know, these are, I spent six months discussing exactly this kind of thing when I was developing OCP with Jason Hackett. And uh, we spent hours discussing these sorts of situations. And, and if you want to make us, to develop a serious partnership, you do need to spend that time. Um, and at the end of the day, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter what you play as long as you and your partner are both on the same wavelength. Well, yeah, because you're, you're, bidding, you're bidding at the three level and um, you've no guarantee of, of actually finding a fit. You know, you, you might be ending up playing on a 5-2-3 fit or a 4-3 fit. Um, so I wouldn't... Again, it's a matter of your style. If, uh, um, if, you, if you decide to, to set the limit at, say, 9 points rather than 11, that's fine. As long as you and your partner are expecting the same thing... Um, you know, so often in bridge, it's actually not that you have to play one way or you have to play another way. It's as long as you and your partner are expecting the same things and, and bidding the same things, at least you're still speaking the same language. It doesn't matter what language you're talking. So it's like, you know, uh, I love Precision Club. I've, I've spent my, you know, the last 30, 40 years playing Precision um, but if precision doesn't work for you and you'd rather bid something else, that's fine. And, and lots of world-class pairs don't play precision, would never dream of playing precision. That doesn't mean they're wrong. As long as you and your partner are on the same wavelength, that's good for me. And, it's, and it should be good for you. 
you don't need to to worry about the fact that you're not bidding the same way as somebody else. Um, like I said, being on the same wavelength is actually more important than exactly what you agree to play. So here, this is the sort of, I think I may have an example of this, but I'll, um, I'll just give you an example. Supposing partner opens one spade, and your, your right-hand opponent bids two clubs. And you've got two clubs, four diamonds, four hearts, and three spades. Now, personally, I wouldn't dream of making a negative double here to show the four-card hearts because I've got primary support for partner's spades. So making a negative double normally, especially if partner opened a major, normally denies having primary support for their suit. Um, and so, like I said, don't, don't abuse negative doubles. If you've got a more descriptive bid available, then use that. You know, if you've got a nice five-card suit that you can show, then show it, especially if you're strong enough to then reverse into a, a four-card major. So, supposing, um, again, partner opens one spade, right-hand opponent bids two clubs. If I've got a nice five card diamonds, four card hearts, and maybe a couple of spades, um, I wouldn't necessarily make a negative double. I would bid two diamonds if I'm strong enough to push the bidding higher. If I had a weak hand, but enough that I felt I ought to do something, then I might make a negative double. But if you've got a more descriptive bid, then use it. Because negative doubles are okay, um, but they, they still leave partner a little bit adrift if they don't have primary support for either of those unbid suits. So if you can make it clear that you've got five card or greater length somewhere, then that can be more helpful to them, especially if you've got the strength to bid the other suit afterwards. Okay, um, not all of you will, will play Levensol in any competitive sequence, and if you don't, then um, what I've just said there may not apply. But um, personally, I do play, I have Levensol available in almost any competitive sequence at a relatively low level. Um, so... In, in, in my way of thinking, one diamond overcall of two clubs, three clubs, and one diamond overcall of two clubs, double, are essentially showing the same sorts of hands. The difference is, is that one is game forcing, the cubid of their club suit is game forcing, whereas the negative double is similar but more limited and certainly not game forcing. Okay, so again, the system that you're playing will will necessitate some adjustment to quite a lot of the things I'm saying um, you know those those game forcing stay manic cubids are available to me in some sequences but not in others if you're not playing asking bids then they're probably much more widely available to people who are playing two over one or sand on American or ACL uh, because they don't use asking bids but for example if my partner opens 
one of a major and my right hand opponent overcalls a cue bid of their overcall by me is an asking bid in partners major you won't have that issue so you can make it just stay manic um, if you're playing uh, Levensol or some kind of a game forcing cue bid if you aren't Please do ask if there's something that I've either not covered um, or that where you're not sure about something I've said or disagree strongly with something I've said. Um, it helps to tease out the issues. Okay, moving on. Okay, so support doubles are usually uh, made by opener when partner has made a change of suit response and then opener's right hand opponent has overcalled something. So it's gone something like one diamond from you, one spade from partner and then your right hand opponent has bid two clubs. So support, if you're playing support doubles, over the two club overcall, two spades by you promises four card spade support, but a double from you promises three card support, but not four card support. And it's, it's particularly, support doubles are particularly useful in situations where where partner's bid might only be a four card suit um, oh my god um, hang on right the first sequence Sanya I play as game forcing stay manic Or do you mean including the three heart and the three spade bid? The fact is I play three clubs as game forcing. So it doesn't, you know, the three hearts and the three spade bid are in a game forcing sequence already. Over, I mean, I would play three spades there as simply showing that I have got four card spades and I haven't got four card hearts in other words my my three club bid was compromised to some extent by the fact that I was 4-3 in the majors didn't have something else that I wanted to bid but wanted to set up a game forcing sequence partners show me four card hearts with the three heart bid and I'm now saying no sorry I haven't got four card hearts have got four card spades because obviously it's not impossible that partners got both whatever system you're playing they may have a singleton club and two four card majors and before four four one okay going back to support doubles so it's, it's particularly useful when partner bids one of a major over your opening um, because most people freely will respond with a four card major especially at the one level and if your right hand opponent now overcalls something at the two level it's a means of of showing partner support but telling him exactly how good that support is um, you know personally I, I am quite happy 
to support oh god I wish you'd Sanya I wish you'd asked this before I've moved on to a completely different topic um, uh, hang on let me just read that sequence right okay the difference is is that in your second sequence that you've made a negative double so you've immediately limited your hand the strength of your hand so whereas in the first sequence the three club bid is game forcing so three hearts is forced and three spades is still game forcing because the three club bid was game forcing over your negative double um, again you will definitely be 4-3 in the majors there uh, you won't have four card hearts otherwise you'd have bid four hearts or pass three hearts depending on your strength um, but again it's showing the same hand it's just it's weaker partners perfectly entitled in your second sequence to pass three spades whereas in the first sequence they're not because three clubs was game forcing you could have a 20 count and they've still bid the same way you might be you know working towards a grand slam for all they know but in the second sequence you've limited oh right yeah I mean quite right Roger <laughs> why, why the jump to three hearts in your second sequence Sanya partner could have bid two hearts I suspect that was just a typo so if it goes one diamond over call of two clubs negative double from you partner bids two hearts showing hearts and you bid two spades again you've made a, a more limited bid that's that's probably a sort of in the 8 to 11 range or 8 to 10 even so now if you bid two spades over two hearts again you're showing that you have got four card spades haven't got four card hearts but you probably have got three card hearts and partners perfectly entitled to pass two spades if you're not playing precision and partners found themselves with some massive red two suitor um, then yes they could force to gain themselves with three hearts rather than bidding two hearts um, and I would just treat that as a game forcing rever reverse given that you've shown some values already um, and again now three spades is showing that you haven't got four card hearts but have got four card spades and partner can decide where to place the contract okay but I suspect that you meant three hearts as two hearts and three spades as two spades in your second sequence well personally I'm quite happy to be an emotion if there's nothing else better on offer um, I have no idea what the, <laughs> what the, the system that the robots play um, I, I don't find it much fun playing against robots so I tend not to do it um, if they say they play support doubles then they probably do um, you know sometimes a 4-3 fit ok Joe thanks well there's not much point there's not much point Carly if if partners want if you if you play a sequence the reason why support doubles came across is that most people don't play the way that you've suggested if you open say one diamond and partner bids one spade they don't normally have to have a five card spade suit to bid one spade nobody I don't know anybody actually who plays that way if they open one spade they might promise five card spades but if they respond one spade to an opening of a lower suit by partner 
that are normally only bidding showing four. If you if you play that it promises five, then there isn't much point in playing support doubles. Or you've got to move the goalpost slightly and say that the support double promises two car. No problem, Sanya. I, it's just it's difficult when I've moved on to a completely different thing. Hopefully I've answered your questions. Uh, it's not a problem, but um, it's, it's just mental gymnastics is not always my strong point. <laughs> the reason I ask if there's any questions is so that I've got, I give time for people to formulate and type the questions before I move on. Um, but uh, anyway, no problem. Um, right, okay, that's slightly different. Uh, yes, there. That's not. I mean, if you if you open one spade and partner bids two hearts, I'm immediately there. Yes, assuming that that partner has five card hearts. The I I wouldn't assume otherwise. So now if if your right hand so if it goes one spade from you two hearts from partner and your right hand opponent bids three clubs then now you just have to move the goalpost slightly so you can assume that partner's got five card hearts so you bidding hearts shows three card support and your support double is showing two card heart support because partner may have six card hearts and again, it doesn't matter whether you stick to the original definition of a support double or not. As, again, as long as you and partner are on the same wavelength and you've discussed it, um, it's fine. Um, it's, it's not often that you'll come up against that kind of a sequence. Um, but the value of developing a partnership is that hopefully you've discussed those sorts of things. It's easy to just say, do you play support doubles? Better to have the conversation that includes covering those sequences where you've opened one spade, partner's bid, two hearts, um, and you can differentiate between two card and three card heart support. Just hang on a minute. Okay, so support redoubles. Um, work a little bit like I've just shown there. So you've opened one diamond, partner responds one heart. May have four card hearts, may have five or more right hand opponent makes a take out double showing the black suit now you can redouble to show three card heart support and two hearts shows four card heart support um, and, and there are I think so uh, and there are other sequences especially if you're not playing third suit doubles which I'm going to come to a bit later on um, You could uh, you could pay support redoubles and support doubles um, in other sequences. Um, right, where are we?
Well, again, by, by uh, Douglas, by partnership agreement, um, you could have uh, a sequence such as um, one diamond from you, one heart from partner, one spade from you. As this, this is more if you're not playing precision. Um, one diamond, one heart, one spade and then a two club overcall and now partner could double to show uh, three card spade support and bid two spades to show four card spade support. Um, it doesn't apply really to precision uh, because as soon as you open one diamond you're denying having five card spades. So uh, support doubles don't really apply uh, if you're playing precision, they don't normally apply when it's opener's suit that's in question rather than responders. Okay? But if you're playing two over one or standard American, if you've got six card clubs and five cards spades, uh, well, it is, it is normally. Um, it is normally uh, Duffer um, I won't say never like I said you, you might open if you had six card clubs and five card spades you might open one club and rebid one spade and now there might be some value in, in having a support double available to responder um, but again, I, I normally play precision, so it wouldn't apply to me because as soon as I open, for example, one diamond, um, I'm denying having five card spades. If I show a spade suit, it's got to be four card. It can't possibly be five. So there's no point playing a support double in those circumstances for me. But if you're playing standard American or ACOL or two over one or some other system, then it might apply, but it's a rare occurrence. Support doubles are almost always about responders suit when they've made a one level uh, response to an opening by you. What was your other thing Joe? Uh, Oh, absolutely. I, I mean, if... Yeah, it doesn't... Uh, you're absolutely right, Ken. It doesn't... Uh, it might conceivably apply, but I, I can't think of many instances. I can't think... Personally, I can't think of any instances where I would want Responder to be able to make a support double or a support redouble. Um, uh, if you look at definitions of support doubles it's almost always shown as the double is made by opener showing three or four card support for responder suit that's, if you look it up on the internet that's what it normally shows um, because it's hard it's hard to think of instances where responder is actually going to get any useful use out of that kind of a bid ok Joe you're absolutely right there is a neg negative inference if you pass for example over that overcall so it goes um, one diamond from you one spade from partner two clubs on your right if you pass here there's a definite inference that you've got at most a doubleton probably less in partner's spade suit <coughs> a lot of people sometimes forget that, that if your right hand opponent has bid passes a perfectly legitimate bid by you and it can convey just as much information as actually bidding something um, so there's a, there's a you know if you bid something over that overcall like it goes one diamond from you 
one spade from partner, two clubs on your right. If you bid two diamonds or if you pass, there's a definite inference that you haven't got three card or four card spade support. In other words, if partner only has four card spades, they should shut up about the spades. Um, you know, and especially if you pass, then you're, you're probably minimum range without any kind of spade support. But probably not with the ability to bid two diamonds. And probably not with four card hearts either. So yes, negative inference is very important. A crucial part of bidding. Does that, does that cover what you were after, Joe? Mm. No, quite right. It's a, it's a very valid point. I, I don't necessarily have time to cover all of the nuances um, in the session, but it's a very valid point. Absolutely right. Again, your, your support for clubs might be adjusted depending on uh, your system you play and what you expect from the two club bid. Um, you might change that to the double showing two card support and three clubs showing three card support if you absolutely play that partner must have five or more clubs here. Um, the critical thing is what pass means and what partner should do if they want to carry on bidding. So if it goes um, one diamond from you, one spade from partner, two hearts over call and you pass, if partner wants to carry on bidding, they should seriously considering, consider starting off with a takeout double in case you had a penalty double of two hearts but couldn't do it because it would be showing a support double. That comes back to one of the guidelines. So if I can't make a double because it would be some kind of a takeout or artificial double, if I can't make a penalty double and the bidding comes back round to you, you should be reopening with a double if possible in case I had a penalty double of their overcall that I wasn't able to make. Again, the vulnerability makes a big difference there. Absolutely right, Duffer. Yeah, I mean, that's... That was one of the guidelines that I gave right at the beginning. Um, if, if partner doesn't make a double, if they, especially if they pass, um, when they, they, a double by them wouldn't have been a penalty double and the bidding is passed back round to you, you should be bursting at the seams if you, if you feel you need to bid something to start off by making a takeout double in case partner had a penalty double that they couldn't make because it would have been some kind of other artificial double. Again, we'll come back to Snapdragon shortly. Um, So theoretically, you can have support doubles by responder, but almost always 
there by opener and redoubles. Yes. Yeah, go on, Duffer. Yes, I, there's not, no, I think that's slightly different. Um, if, if you get a sequence, no, just, just let me finish what my, my train of thought here. If you, um, if you open one diamond and partner bids one spade and your right-hand opponent doubles, for the sake of example, and you pass... Uh, partner's got another bid here that's why you're able to pass and your your double sorry your, your lack of a redouble is therefore and the lack of a spade support bid from you is showing that you've got less than three card spade support um, uh, it's a matter of partnership understanding between you and your partner as to what partner's redouble means. But they don't, they don't have to. They might have a, a really weak hand and six card spades and just be quite happy to play in one spade doubled. And so redouble shouldn't, shouldn't necessarily be um, anything in particular. It's a matter for you to discuss with your partner. You could play it as SOS, but that implies a degree of support for, the, for other stuff. Um, it's not something that's going to come up very often where partners bid one spade, right-hand opponent doubles for takeout, and the left-hand opponent sat underneath the spade bidder passes for penalties. It might happen, but it's not likely to happen very often. Um, normally you would pass for penalties if you were sat over the spade bidder but not sat underneath them um, so I, I won't say it will never happen so the need for redouble to be anything in particular is less there um, it's not quite the same as if, if your right hand opponent bids two clubs and you pass and it's passed back round to the one spade bidder all I'm saying is that they should especially at, at favourable vulnerability where ops are vulnerable and you aren't they should be trying to reopen with a double if anything uh, in case you had a penalty double of two clubs that you weren't able to bid because it would have been a support double okay any other questions before we move on? Duffer, do you see what I'm... Okay. Um... Okay, and that's fair enough, Ken. I, I mean, one, one no trump is a more descriptive bid on your hand, perhaps, there, especially if you don't have a roughing value. Um, you know, if you're 4 3 3 3, uh, I'm much more wary of getting into a Moisian fit um, if I'm 4 3 3 3 because I don't have a roughing value. Um, but yeah if you've got a strong spade holding like that and a sort of fairly mediocre three card heart support with nothing in particular and no shape yes I would rebid one no trump every time absolutely um, again these are only guidelines you have to think on your feet uh, Just go back to looking at...
Okay, I, Duffa, going back to what you were saying there. Um, yeah, I mean, I would, I wouldn't play redouble by the one personally if it goes one diamond, one spade, two clubs over call, um, or sorry, a double rather, and it's passed back round to the spade bidder. Personally, I would play redouble as strong. Um, I, I wouldn't have any particular agreement about redouble being SOS or something else. But you have to, the, the one spade bidder must bear in mind that this takeout double of one spade has been passed for penalties by their right hand opponent. So they need to have really good spades and a strong hand, strong ish hand, um, to be comfortable playing in one spade. They need to be expecting that their left hand opponent. Yes, I would. I certainly wouldn't play support doubles at the three level. Um, like I said, normally uh, it's it's when partners shown, particularly one of a major. Um, you know, I mean, I wouldn't even if you're playing two over one, then it goes one club from you, one diamond from partner, and one heart from right hand opponent and, and partner bids one heart I must have a more descriptive bid if it's, if it's gone playing two over one or standard American one club one diamond one heart over call um, I don't need to differentiate between three card and four card diamond support I'm, I'm looking to play somewhere else I'm not look, looking to play in diamonds so I mean personally Again, your mileage may differ. Personally, um, I would try and bid something else before I started differentiating between uh, three-card and four-card diamond support there. Um, so I, I wouldn't normally play support doubles at three level. But again... It's, it's like anything else. You need to decide with your partner what level you play them up to. Well, that, that's fine. I, I mean, I, I, if, if you want to play that, I see I would play that as Snapdragon if I was playing 2 over 1 or, or Standard American. I, I play that as a third suit double showing the fourth suit. So I would play that showing spades. But, you know, um, I'm not telling you how you have to play these. Uh, I'm just giving you options because a lot of people, uh, a lot of people may never have even heard of support doubles. Or they may have heard of them but thought they were too complicated. You know, actually they aren't. Um, if you want to play that as, you know, that, that sequence, Douglas, as, as showing uh, three-card diamond support, probably not four-card spades, that's fine. Um, again, it's all, it's all about partnership agreement, all of this stuff. I'm just, just giving you the options, and you have to fit it into the system that you play. Um, you know that sequence wouldn't apply to me because one club for me is 16 plus one diamond isn't showing diamonds it's showing 0 to 7 high card points so again that system the system I play that sequence would never arise where, where I need the double to be showing anything about my diamonds because No, Snapdragon is, is, yes, it is doing that. But, um, again, it depends on your system. If I, if I, Douglas, if I open one diamond and partner bids one heart, again, the way I play, I can't have five spades. Otherwise, I would have opened one spade. So, there's no point in, in having... Um, uh, 
uh, that differentiating four from five, it may just be a weak, you know, and I mean, actually, absolutely. I'm, I might have, um, if it goes one diamond, one heart, again, it, it just wouldn't apply to me. No, but again, I play precision. If I open one diamond, I'm absolutely categorically denying having a five-card major. So it, it, it can't apply to me. You may have that, that issue. You may open one diamond or bid one diamond over one club with that shape. Um, so respond to having six diamonds and five-card spades might apply. Um, but certainly, from the point of view of opener's hand, personally, if I open one diamond, I can't have five card hearts or five card spades. Absolutely impossible. <sighs> that's right. Exactly, Ken. And that's exactly my the way if I'm playing... Um, a natural system like two over one or standard American. Uh, I, I essentially play the double there is is over one club, one diamond, one spade, uh, one spade over call. I show the double as showing hearts. Uh, in other words, it's a snapdragon third suit double showing the fourth suit because I can't bid it at the one level. And if I bid it at the two level, partner's entitled to think of it as a reverse. So it's a way of showing hearts without reversing into them by bidding two hearts. Um, over one club, one diamond, one heart over call, I've got an easy one spade rebid, so I don't need to play it like that. But I, I wouldn't normally, what I was getting across is that I wouldn't normally play one club, one diamond, one heart double as differentiating between three card and four card diamond support. Particularly because if I play, if I bid one club, I'm not saying anything about clubs. If partner bids one diamond, they're not saying anything about diamonds. Okay, let's let's move on because otherwise we're going to run out of time. Uh, sorry, Duffo, go on. Just, just clarify what you're asking for. Absolutely, you're not promising three to an honour. Oh, it's always nicer to have ace, king, queen in partner's suit. <laughs> but you won't, all, you won't normally get it. Uh, support is support. And, and unless you have, you know, I, I play precision and there are times when I'm definitely promising three to an honour at least if I show support. But I might be four small rather than three to an honour. Um, but you know, if it goes one spade, double two spades. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely, Joe. <laughs> the thing is, I, like I said, you, if your system says that you're, if you're showing support, you must have three to an honour. Then that's fine. Um, there are times in, in precision where that is the case, and there are times when, if you're in a natural system, when three small is going to be just as good as three to an honour. It depends on your overall strength. And, uh, there, was a, there was a actually something in the OCP forums recently where I would almost, if I, had, if I was anticipating roughing, I would almost rather have three small than king queen x because I don't want partners, I don't want our trump solidity to be affected by the fact that I'm having to rough in, in my hand. I'd rather have three small because now I can rough without compromising our trump solidity such as it is. If it turns out partners got jack nine to six, then that's just tough. But, but at least my roughing in my hand isn't affecting 
the value of partner's suit. Whereas, if I'm rupping with my king-queen X, now if partner's got a very weak hand, we may well have wrecked our trump solidity. So there are times when three small is potentially better than three to an honour. If you're going to get forced in, in your hand, the short, the short trump hand. Okay. It's the usual... Well, I, I mean, it does... Do you see what I, I can give you? I haven't got the time to do it now, but I can give you hands where that would apply. I mean, in fact, if you, if you look at the hand that's shown here, um, on the table, the south hand here, if partner ends up bidding heart, I'm almost happier, given my spade singleton, and part ops are probably bidding spades, if we end up playing in hearts, I'm almost better off having three small in hearts because I can rough spades till the cows come home um, without it affecting the solidity of our heart suit. Whereas, um, potentially, from my point of view, if I had king queen x in hearts I would be more worried about the prospects of, of going high because I know that ops are going to be forcing me in hearts at trick two if partner doesn't have the ace and, and quite soon I'm going to be having to rough with an honour which I may not be able to afford to do it's just something worth bearing in mind um Okay, let's move on, because otherwise we're going to run out of time, guys, if there's no other critical questions on support doubles. Bear with me a minute. I've managed to acquire Life with a poodle. <coughs> okay, where were we? Um, right, competitive <coughs> doubles. <coughs> Moving doesn't do me any good. <coughs> oh, sorry. <coughs> Hit the wrong button. So the essential ingredients of a competitive double are that ops have agreed a suit. In other words, one of them has bid a suit, the other one has supported it. Uh, if their suit is lower ranking than, than yours, and it's where they've bid it at the three level, uh, if their suit is higher ranking than yours, it may be where they've bid it at the two level. Either way, it's where a three level bid of your suit, um, you want to be able to differentiate between it either being competitive or invitational. And the idea is that the competitive double is invitational and the actual bid of your suit at the three level is just competitive that's that's the idea behind competitive doubles
Um, I've never heard it called Maximal X. Um, it sounds like they're the same thing, Ellie. Um, probably Maximal X is just somebody who wasn't happy calling it what everybody else called it, which is a competitive double, <laughs> and thought up a new name for it. Um, sounds like it's the same sort of thing. Especially if you can't see a difference. I, I've never heard it called a Maximal X double. Which I've never read, Ken, and probably never will read. Um, again, if they, if they call competitive doubles Maximal X doubles, then good luck to them. And if they understand the same thing, they're very valuable. Um, competitive doubles are very useful, but... Um, and I mean, competitive doubles is uh, is perhaps it's perhaps mm, yes, possibly. Um, I, I mean, actually, competitive doubles are, are actually I know it's called that for me. Um, actually, that's a little bit misleading because the double is actually invitational. It's the bid that's competitive. Um, Maybe that's why somebody thought up Maximal Doubles as a name. But I personally, I've never heard them called that. Uh, if we're understanding the same thing, then it's fine. It's just a name. In other words, it's invitational. <laughs> I, I, you know, I try and explain things in a way that you know, if you if you call it invitational in partner suit or in the suit that you've agreed, um, that's good enough for me. Right, but if it was okay, but if you bid, for example, one heart, your left-hand opponent bid one spade, partner bids two hearts and your right-hand opponent bids two spades, you can still use competitive doubles. Because, uh, especially if you're not playing Levensol, uh, because you want to differentiate between what three hearts means by you. If you want to invite, you've agreed hearts and they've agreed spades. What you want to do is to differentiate between you competing in hearts, but not wanting to... to make that invitational and wanting to actually issue an invitation in hearts to partner that's the thing so it doesn't have to be a suit just below yours um, if they bid their suit at the one level supported it at the two level it can be higher ranking than yours the point is to differentiate between three of what three of your suit means and uh, if they've bid and supported the suit it's very unlikely that you're going to want to um, try and get a, a penalty double at the three level um, so it's more useful to keep the double as a competitive double or a maximal X double or a cooperative double whatever you want to call it um, and, uh, and then if you actually bid your suit at the three level it's just competitive. Again, if you're playing Levin Solid competitive sequences like I do, you've got a further string to your bow here because um, you've got two no trumps being Levin Sol and you can have slow and fast bids of your suit. So you can get away without using um, competitive doubles if you've got Levin Sol available. Um, and that means that you then do potentially have a penalty double available to you if you can differentiate between competitive and invitational hands by using Lebensol instead. Which is a good reason for playing Lebensol. <coughs> but that's a different lesson which we've already had. <coughs> right, where was I?
So, if you're at the three level, competitive doubles only apply if their suit is lower ranking than yours. If we're at the two level still, um, in other words, they bid their suit at the one level, supported it at the two level, and it's higher ranking than yours, then you can still potentially play competitive doubles at the two level. But normally it is um, defined as being at the three level when uh, their suit is lower ranking. Just bear with me a second. Again, the, the exact level that you play responsive doubles up to is entirely up to you. Um, so I put three spades, but if you agree to play them to a different level only, then that's fine. Okay, uh, this is back to negative inferences that... Uh, Joe mentioned before. Uh, supposing your left hand opponent opens one heart, partner makes a takeout double, right hand opponent bids two clubs. If you double now, you're showing spades and diamonds. So that's, that's a responsive double. Um, if you actually bid spades or diamonds, you're suggesting that your support for the suit that you bid is much better than your support from the other suit. So if you've got, say, I don't know, 5-4, if you're 5-4 in diamonds and spades, you might make a responsive double. But if you were 5-3, you would probably bid one suit or the other because your support for one suit is much better so it's not necessarily a lack of support for the other suit, but it's definitely that your support for the suit that you've bid is much better than the other one. In other words, you have a definite preference. So there, we're back to one of the guidelines. If you've got a penalty double of hearts in that situation, you can't double because the double would be responsive, showing support for spades and the minors. In other words, it's telling, it's, sent, it's basically it's telling partner to bid their preference, and that you don't really have one, and that you've got decent support for the other three suits. If you've got a penalty double of hearts, then you just have no option but to pass, pass over hearts and partner, hope that partner can reopen with a double again. So one heart, double, two hearts, pass, pass, double, is a demand to bid something, and now you can pass for penalties. So this is, again, something that, that you can agree or not with your partner. I, I would certainly play that responsive doubles don't, don't show any additional strength. Um, it's, it's merely a message to partner that you've got su good, good support in either of the unbid suits. Um, given that partner is now the one potentially who's going to bid one of those suits, 
if you do have some additional strength, you can then push on towards game or slam or whatever. Um, so the responsive doubles aren't necessarily showing lots of strength. They're j it's the degree of support you've got for the, for the unbid suit um, and the evenness of that support. So I'm pushing on a little bit, so we've got time to, uh, to, to play a few practice hands at the end. Um, I, 12. Um, again, Duffer, that's, that's really a matter um, for you. You're not forced to bid, so you're not going to bid with, um, you know, a Yabra or two or three points, unless you've got really good, it is depending on shape, and so I'm not, I wouldn't put, I wouldn't put a, an actual limit on it. That's exactly what I mean. Um, but, but it is a free bid, but, you know, you might be 5-5 five five in the unbid suit, and have a singleton in their suit, you know, you would be, if partners made a takeout double, um, you know, even with a three count, I would be wanting to do something here. And so the responsive double is simply saying, listen, have a, you know, the other suit. If it's gone one heart, double, two clubs, and I'm five, five in spades and diamonds, even with a three count, I want partner to compete further. And I'm going to make a responsive double rather than bidding something so that they can show which of the unbid suits they prefer. And I might then pass or I might compete further. Um, that's the point. It's, it's showing, it's responding to partners take out double with a double yourself that, that shows good support for the unbid suits. So again, it's essentially it's another takeout double by you responding to partners' takeout double, but it's not. It isn't normally promising any extra strength. A partner can only assume that you would have the same sort of strength that you would have if you'd bid one of one of the out the unbid suits at a minimum level. That's fine, Ken. I, I mean, the, the the point I was making is that, again, as as long as you and partner are on the same wavelength, that's fine. If, if that's the agreement that you have, um, I would just play that sequence: one heart, double, two hearts, double, as just saying, "Have at it." You know, I can support any of the other three suits um, you know because there is no guarantee that partners got if partners got singleton heart three card spades four card diamonds five card clubs they may well make a takeout double rather than um, rather than bidding two clubs because they can they've got a, a good hand for a takeout double even though they haven't got four card spades. So if I've got, you know, nothing in hearts and good support for the other three suits, I would make a responsive double, even if I had four card spades, because I can't guarantee that partner's got four card spades. I don't play that the takeout double guarantees. A takeout double of one heart guarantees four spades. If you do, then that's fine. Um, yes, probably. Again, that goes back to one of the guidelines. Uh, partners made 
a takeout double of one heart. Right hand opponent is presumably denying good support for hearts. So yes, I would play this double as penalty. Absolutely. Um, you know, we can assume that partner's got opening strength hand. The one no trump bidder may be absolutely struggling. They haven't necessarily got, you know, the strength to bid something at the two level. They may not have spades. And one no trump is just saying, listen, I don't really like hearts. Maybe one no trump's better. So yes, I would play this as, pe as penalties. Um, and it also, I would also play that as implying the ability to make a take out, uh, sorry, a penalty double of hearts as well. Because the chances are, you know, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't double that one no trump bid unless I was also able to, to double two hearts by left hand opponent even though I'm sat underneath them. Okay, let's move on, guys, because otherwise it's going to be midnight and uh, we won't get any practice hands in. We're going to struggle as it is. So third suit doubles, um, or snapdragon, whatever you want to call it. Um, some people do call them fourth suit doubles because you're showing the fourth suit. Um, again, partnership agreement here uh, is everything. If you want to play it the other way around, that bidding the fourth suit shows tolerance for partner suit, and the third or fourth suit double, snapdragon double, um, denies having partners support for partners or tolerance for partners suit that's fine as long as you and partner are on the same wavelength that's fine and as I've said there Levin Sol in competition having that available really does affect the nuances here because uh, if we're in a situation where Levin Sol applies you can usually make this differentiate by uh, make this kind of differentiation by whether you make a slow or a fast bid of your suit at the three level. Um, they don't come up very often and they do potentially conflict. There are some sequences where you either have to play Snapdragon or you have to play um, uh, competitive or uh, support doubles. You can't necessarily play all of them. Um, I would say third suit doubles are probably less useful than the other ones that I've already shown. Uh, okay, let's recap a little bit.
again there for number three it can be where they've bidden support in a suit at the two level but it's higher ranking than our suit um, but again if you've got Levinson and competition available you don't need competitive doubles in those circumstances because you can either make a slow or fast raise of partners suit um, at the three level to differentiate um, so again normally competitive doubles uh, are when their suits lower ranking and they've bid and supported us at the three level Um, window, no, Windows tab. The Windows. Sorry, guys. Yes. Right. Now, right click on the Chrome icon on the bottom on the taskbar. Right click on that. Close window. There you go. You're welcome. Yeah, Ken, I, I mean, that, it takes time, and, and even if you find a partner who's agreed to give it a go, uh, it does take time to really get into Levinson in, in any competitive sequence. It's much easier in, in the places where Levinson normally um, is agreed as applying, i.e., we've opened one, no Trump, they've over overcalled at the two level, um, or they've opened a week two and partners made a take out double that's the most common places for Levensol. Uh Levensol in any competitive sequence if it's natural um, getting straight in your head when that does apply and when it doesn't apply because there are times when you need two no trumps for something else um, so you have to you have to a get your head around that and B, get your head around all of the nuances that, that flow from having Levensol available and whether partner uses it or not and exactly what they bid and what the sequence has been so far. Uh, you ask anybody in the OCP camp uh, who's had to get their head around and it does take time and you'll have a few upsets um, where you think Tuno Trumps is Levensol and partner doesn't. And, and therefore you're not on the same wavelength. So it does take time, but it, it honestly, it does repay the amount of time and effort that you put into it. It's, it's something that really, um, really does work and does benefit you. Um, but it is, can be a fairly painful process. Uh, you ask, said you ask any, any of the OCP practitioners here, and there are a few here, um, it, it's not a straightforward topic um, and even if you've pretty much got your head around it getting your head around all of the nuances takes time ok we've got 10 minutes we'll uh, unless if there's no more questions we'll, we'll try and get a couple of hands in um, can I please have four people sitting please um, I'll try and find a couple of Thank you, Roger. Can we have an east-west, please? Come on, don't be shy. You've sat here listening to me drone on for the last couple of hours. The least you can do is sit down and play a bit. But it is only going to be for ten minutes, and the longer that we sit here waiting for people to sit, 
the fewer hands we're going to get in. Come on, guys, if need be, I'll sit east-west, but it's no fun for me because I set the hands and I can see all 52 cards. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, we'll have a look at this one first. Again, play whatever system you want. They're not normally system dependent, these hands. Chorus. C-H-O-R-U-S. Struggling. Maybe I'll cook. It's fine. I'm quite happy to cook. Yeah, but. But what? I, just felt like I bought all the food. Yeah, I know, but it's a bit late. Ah, it's not going to take that long. The sausages don't need to. It's not like they need to. To cook for ages. It's not like mince. Anyway, we're into going to bed at 4 a.m., so it doesn't matter. Okay, um, uh, fair enough, I guess it, it depends on your, your view of the hand. I think personally, uh, partners made a, f from South's point of view, partners made a free bit of four diamonds um, when I don't have to have necessarily huge length in diamonds so they're they've definitely got a hand where they want to compete here um, so I think the double of four hearts has to be optional um, given South's hand with a singleton heart it's clear that ops have got a fair number of hearts given that they're bidding them red against green uh, I would be mm, bidding five diamonds before I pass the double of four hearts. Four hearts is going off, no question. But uh, you're only going to get one, two, th three, four tricks. So it's only going off for 200. Um, and that's not much of a compensation against five diamonds making. So if South had fewer diamonds and more hearts, I would pass the double of four hearts. But with a singleton heart, um, uh, I think the double of um, four hearts has to be optional here rather than 100% uh, uh, for penalties. Is that how you intended it, Ken? No comment from North. <laughs> so there's no question five diamonds north south is or even four spades um, is uh, a better contract than five diamonds. 
uh, sorry, than four hearts doubled. Um, okay. Moving on. We'll find another one quickly. What's the oops for, Ken? <laughs> I think it's just down to this hand is just down to um, to South's hand rather than North. You know, North is showing values. Um, they can't. They can't really. Exactly. That's what I mean, Ken. It's it's optional. Um, it's if you had uh, a heart stack, you would probably be doing something different than bidding four diamonds. Um, and uh, so over four hearts, um, East West must have all the hearts here to be bidding it red against green. Um, exactly. So it's it's either pass if you think we've got the top tricks to um, to take this two or three off. But when South has a heart shortage and Yeah, but I think I think it's South who, who has to decide over your double as to whether to bid four spades. They've already shown the three-card spade support with their original double. Um, so they could bid four spades over your double. They could bid five diamonds because they have got nice five-card diamonds and the heart shortage. Uh, either of those is a reasonable response. Personally, I would worry about playing in four hearts doubled, even at this vulnerability, because I know that partner can't have a trump stack. And we've got a double fit, which means they've probably got some shape floating around, so we may not get as many defensive tricks as we think. Okay, next one. So that last time we had a nice example of a responsive double uh, and something that I haven't covered today which is the optional double um, which is more a sort of common sense thing. It's, there's no hard and fast rules about optional doubles. Uh, 
Um, I think somebody said, I think May said that she was going to cover the practice tomorrow. Yeah, good point, Douglas. I would, I would have figured that as well. Yeah, I think uh, if North had made a responsive double over one spade, I think you'd probably have found it. No, I don't think so. It's not it's not denying hearts making a responsive double. It's showing hearts and showing clubs. It's saying, um, you know, I've got good support for the two unbid suits and, and North has. It's, yeah. I mean, there's nothing wrong with bidding two hearts. You know, it's a free bid and they have got five card hearts and partner surely has at least three. There's nothing wrong with that. But as you found out, knowing that partners got clubs as well makes quite a big difference um, you know knowing that there's a double fit there makes a big difference to South's estimation of their hand you know North's a past hand they've not bid three hearts they've only bid two hearts so they have limited their hand um, Exactly. You know, um, it has a big bearing on, on South's estimation of their hand because if Barton's got good support for hearts and clubs, Ops, yeah, the thing is here is that Ops, Ops, if, if Barton's got good support for hearts and clubs, if North has that, they surely, Ops aren't going mad in, in diamonds. And if they had a, an 11 card diamond fit, they surely would be. So the chances are partners got some diamonds as well, which means they almost have to be short in spades. Um, so knowing that partners got clubs it makes quite a big difference. Um, no, you're too worried about the diamonds. I would say, Douglas. Okay, I, I mean, going back to your comment there, Ken, I, I, think, I think this is a hand where I would bid a responsive double over one spade in a nanosecond. Um, I'm 5'4", I'm not strong, but I've got 5'4", No, I, I think, you know, you can always push afterwards. You know that partner's probably short in diamonds and you're short in spades. This is to Ken. Um, so, if you... Oh, my God. Well, okay, I, I, that's your style. You know, if that works for you, Ken, that's fine. Um... Uh, you're not going to get a penalty at the one level. It's very unlikely anyway. Um, which is why most people would play a double of one spade in this sequence as responsive rather than anything else. Um, that's the whole point. There's not much point playing a double of one spade as penalty. As penalty. Um, 
Sun is asked about the OCP practice tomorrow. I'm sure that uh, May said that she was going to cover it. She implied something like that in the forum. Um, but uh, I don't know. So I certainly I can't cover it tomorrow. Um, I understand that John Lute is unavailable. Just one second. Sorry, I'm reading something. Just hang on a minute. Um, yeah, but even so, Ken, you know, I would, I would. I might be one no Trump if I had spades. Um, are you really honestly going to come up with a, a, a psych of one spade that often? Um, absolutely. Anyway, guys, it's 10 past 12. Um, I need to go and cook my dinner. Otherwise, we really will be going to bed at 4 a.m. Um, so next week, we're looking at, at some slightly more high-level stuff than here. Um, yeah, it's a very nice seven, though, Ken. <laughs> and like I said before, responsive doubles don't promise any extra strength. It's, it's just showing that you've got good support for the two unbid suits. That's all it's showing. It's not showing that you've got lots of points, necessarily. 